All right, so in the last podcast, we talked about how to calculate the energy change for these diagonal portions of the graph, and we decided that Q equal MC delta T was the best way to go. Now, on these flat um, regions of the graph, we're going to have to do something else. There is no change in temperature here, so delta T would be zero. So Q equal MC delta T will not help us. Plus, we're going from one state to another, so we would have a hard time determining which specific heat value we should use. Should we use liquid water or should we use solid water? What should we use? So and during a phase change, the temperature is not changing, as uh, we just noted. But energy is still being added, okay, or removed, depending on which way you're going. This energy is not making the molecules move faster, so it's not increasing the energy or the temperature, but instead the energy is being used to either make or break the IMFs or the intermolecular forces between the molecules. So we have two different um, conversion factors that will help us. The first is, I'm going to start on this side because this one really makes more sense to be first, the molar enthalpy of fusion or the heat of fusion is the energy required to melt one gram of a substance, okay? So we're talking about going from a solid to a liquid here, okay? So melting. It so happens that the opposite of that process of uh, melting would be freezing or solidification. The value um, for the enthalpy of fusion is the same as the value for the heat of solidification except for one thing, it's negative. So solidification you're talking about going from um, a solid to a liquid. Okay, so same exact number except for solidification is negative because it's exothermic, you're losing energy. All right, now the other one is the heat of vaporization. Okay, so that's the energy required to um, vaporize or go from liquid to gas, one mole. Okay, and exact same value but opposite sign would be condensation because condensation is exothermic. Okay, so you're probably like, what's this lady talking about? Well, this is what this lady's talking about. The heat of fusion or solidification is 335 joules for one gram. So it takes 335 joules to melt one gram of a substance or negative 335 joules to freeze one gram of a substance. Heat of vaporization is 2,330 joules for one gram, and then condensation is going to lose uh, 200, I mean 2,330 joules for every one gram. So just remember that condensation and solidification are going to be negative. Same number, but negative. So now let's look at a little calculations. The energy required to heat or to uh, vaporize, whoa, 15 grams of water. So we're starting with 15 grams of water. Vaporize, which means we're going to need the heat of vaporization. So we're just going to line up our units. We got one gram on bottom, 2,300 and that was 30 joules on top. The grams cancel. So it's going to take 15 times 2,330. And you should get that. So that's how many joules it's going to take. All right. Uh, how about the mass of water in grams that can be vaporized by 20 kilojoules of energy? Well, our conversion factors are in joules, not kilojoules, so we'll, we'll need to convert. So 20,000 joules is 20 kilojoules. Vaporization, so again, heat of vaporization. So we're going to use the same conversion factor, but now joules is on top. So we're going to have to flip it so that our units line up. So basically you have 20,000 divided by 2,330, which will vaporize 8.58 grams of water. All right, now the last one asks us to calculate the energy needed to freeze 3.25 moles of water. Well, we're starting in moles, so that does give us one extra step because our conversion factor is in grams. So we'll need to put the molar mass of water on top so that we can get... Um, grams and then we can set up our conversion factor so one gram will be on bottom now we're talking about freezing so we're going to need the heat of fusion but freezing is uh, the opposite so it's actually the heat of 
solidification. So this is going to be negative, right? So it's going to be negative 335 joules. And then you're going to multiply across. And you will lose 19,614.7 joules to freeze 3.25 moles of water. Okay, now I really like this picture because it kind of sums it all up for us. So it's still, remember this is from the uh, first podcast. So showing us our states of matter that are occurring in the molecular form at each portion of the graph. This also shows us that for the diagonals, we can use Q equal MC delta T. And then for the flat lines, we're using the enthalpies of fusion or vaporization or condensation or solidification. Okay, so I really like that.